Today I want to make a video that is more interesting for those of you that are taking wildlife photos with the Micro Four Thirds system because here I have three different uh, telephoto lenses from uh, the OM system slash Olympus depending on when the lens was released it's labeled a bit differently um, we have here the 100 to 400 millimeter f5 to 6.3 the 150 to 600 millimeter f5 to 6.3 and here the 300 millimeter f4 prime lens and I have used all of these lenses out in the field I also did some tests at home and I want to compare them a bit to help you decide which is the right lens for you I want to talk about the different differences in the handling, how they are built, about my impressions that I had on sharpness with the lenses, how the autofocus performed, because this is a crucial point that you cannot just find in the spec sheets, the performance of the image stabilizer, and also talk about how you can, how, how kind of soft or clean the background looks with these different lenses at different focal lengths. So I think if you are a Micro Four Thirds shooter and one of these lenses is interesting to you, you will enjoy this video. In terms of weight it can be a bit confusing because the specifications that you can find uh, on the website of OM system are actually a bit different. Sometimes they are with the lens out, sometimes without, sometimes with the lens uh, with the tripod color, sometimes without. So I, I put them here in the table but I also did my own tests where I just put them in a ready to use state. So this means with the lens foot and with the lens foot attached, put them on my kitchen scale. And the lightest lens is the 100 to 400 millimeter with 1.4 kilograms. We have the 150 to 600 millimeter coming out at 2.24 kilograms. And finally the 300 millimeter F4 that weighs 1.48 kilograms. In terms of size, I think you can see quite easily that the 100 to 400 is uh, the smallest, followed by the 300 millimeter f4, and the then the 150 to 600 millimeter clearly the the longest and also the thickest lens, which might be important if you are a bit more limited in terms of um, space in the backpack. Uh, the 100 to 400 and 150 to 600 are obviously zoom lenses, and they are external zooms, meaning that the tubus here is extending if you zoom in or out and you see this even more pronounced here with the um, 150 to 600 millimeter lens that the tubus extends quite a bit. Nevertheless all of these lenses are um, are like dust and uh, water well not proof but protected to some degree. Um, the degree differs a bit and what from what I see that 300 millimeter f4 is the one that has the highest rating which is an ip53 rating which makes sense because it's a pro lens then we have here the 150 to 600 and finally the 100 to 400 where at least on the german or swiss website there is no rating about how dust or splash proof it is but i have shot all of them also in quite some rain now and i didn't have an issue with any of them during the rain i didn't use a rain cover or anything so I would not I would not bother too much about this uh, about the certification of how waterproof they are in the end. In case you want to use a polarization or a ND filter, I put the filter thread in the table. I think for most wildlife photographers this will not be so important. It's maybe important to know that all of them can take teleextenders and I will talk about the performance with teleextenders a bit after. All of these lenses also have an image stabilizer, but only the 150 to 600 and the 300 millimeter f4 have an image stabilizer that can work in kind of in synchronization with the OM1 Mark II, with the IBIS of the OM1 Mark II. So they have this called Sync IS, and the 100 to 400 doesn't have it. I will mention in a few minutes um, how this affected me in the field. If you shoot a lot of fast action, the 300 mm f4 is actually the on, only of the three lenses that can achieve the 50 frames per second with the OM1 Mark II as far as I know. All of these lenses have a focus limiter with varying settings. I put the details in the table above and all of them are quite well suited for some kind of pseudo macro as I would call it. So not going for a tiny fly, but if you go for damselflies, dragonflies, butterflies, some amphibians, reptiles, 
uh, for all these applications, they work great. We have a maximum magnification that is ranging from 0.24 up to 0.35. So that's quite a lot. Um, it depends a bit uh, with the two zoom lenses for the 150 to 600 millimeter, you get the best magnification at 150 millimeter. With the 100 to 400 millimeter, you get the best magnification with 400 millimeter. And this means with the 100 to 400 millimeter, you can have a longer working distance which can be useful for some shire animals, but all of them in the end are tele lenses. So with all of them, you can keep a nice distance to the animal. And I think this makes them really cool tools for some occasional macro work. The price differences between these lenses is quite big. Um, at the moment, the 100 to 400 costs 1,239 in Europe. Uh, the 150 to 600 costs 2,699 euros and the 300 millimeter f4 2,899 euros. Uh, I already want to mention that in the end of the year there will be some offers, some uh, reductions depending on which country you live. So maybe check out the OM system website, I put a link below. When it comes to handling, these lenses all have a bit their uh, special features. So what we have on the 100 to 400 is a lock switch on the right side that you can lock the zoom to 100 millimeter. You cannot lock it to 400 though. And what's maybe important if you put the lens on a table or on the ground with 400 millimeter, it automatically retracts, which I find a bit annoying sometimes. Um, and then as I mentioned, we have the focus limiter, AF manual focus switch and the image stabilization switch on the um, 150 to 600. We have a more sophisticated switch here. We have smooth, tight and lock. Smooth means the 150 to 600 millimeter zoom goes a bit easier. I prefer to have the tripod setting, uh, the tight setting, excuse me, because even with the tight setting, you can see that it actually still goes down if you put it on the ground, especially if you have a camera on top. With the lock setting, you can again lock it, but this only works with 150 millimeters. Then you can maybe see here, we have lens function buttons, uh, three of them around the lens, which is quite nice because you can always reach one easily. And then again, focus limiter, autofocus, manual focus switch and image stabilizer switch. Finally, for the 300 millimeter, we have also the focus limiter, IS switch, and then here lens function button. There is no manual focus switch, which seems a bit confusing, but it's actually built in the focus ring. So if I pull this to the camera, you see that here is the scale, the distance scale with uh, the 1.4 until infinity meters uh, appearing. And like this, you manually focus. If you push it out, uh, you are in autofocus again. I think this is quite cool in the sense that it's a quick change from manual focus to autofocus. It just happened to me that it, I changed it on accident or when taking it out of the backpack without wanting to. What's also special with the 300mm f4 is that it has an integrated lens hood, so I can just turn it here and then uh, push it back. The 100 to 400 and 150 to 600 have a bit more a traditional lens hood that you can just unscrew and then put in reverse if you want to save some space. All three lenses have um, Arca Swiss tripod foots, which is kind of nice because I can just put them on my tripod. Um, unfortunately, the one from the 150 to 600 is quite short, so I actually have problems putting this one on my flex shooter. And even if it fits, the problem is just if you extend the barrel here of the lens to 600 millimeter, it gets a bit front heavy and it's really not in balance anymore. So you would probably need to buy a replacement foot, which I think is a bit of pity because I always like this about the OM or Olympus lenses that you have um, this integrated Arca Swiss profile. And here it feels like not very well thought through, to be honest. Otherwise, since you cannot remove the tripod color on the 150 to 600, it goes very smoothly on the 100 to 400 and 300 millimeter f4. It's a bit less nicely designed. This is also normal. I have to admit for every tripod color that you can take off, it doesn't go as smooth as for the ones where you cannot take it off. So I did some comparisons in terms of image quality. I first checked all the lenses at 300 millimeters and they were all uh, from quite sharp to very sharp. Um, the biggest difference we, I saw with the 100 to 400 that really dropped a bit in uh, the image quality and also especially against the edge of the frame, there was really a significant drop in image quality and also the bokeh didn't look as smooth anymore. 
When I wanted to use a bit more focal length, I used the 600 millimeter at 150 to 600 millimeter. On the other two lenses, I used the 1.4 extender and then cropped a bit more. Um, the 150 to 600 and the 300 millimeter f4 were both quite sharp. The 100 to 400 was really not performing very well, so I don't think I would use the 100 to 400 with an extender um, because I think you just lose too much image quality. But as you can see with these images, I managed to get some nice and sharp images with all of the lenses. In terms of background blur, as you can already guess from the, uh, from the maximum aperture that these lenses have, there is some significant differences. So I did the first test at 300 millimeters and then one at 600 millimeters again with the 100 to 400 and 300 millimeter f4. Um, I used the 1.4 extenders and then cropped a bit more. And at 300 millimeters, the 100 to 400 and 150 to 600 are actually quite similar and the 300 mm f4 gives the clearly smoothest background. If we go to 600 mm, however, the 150 to 600 mm gives 150 to 600 mm gives us the smoothest picture, followed by the 300 mm f4 and uh, clearly on the last place we have the 100 to 400 mm. Of course, you need to decide for yourself if this, if this is something that is important to you or not. In terms of the image stabilization, uh, as I mentioned, theoretically these two lenses should perform better and they did. I did a test um, at 300 millimeter with 1 25th of a second and I got like 58% of acceptable sharp images with the 100 to 400, 95% of acceptable, sh acceptable sharp images with the 150 to 600 and 100% of more or less sharp images with the 300 millimeter of four, f4. Please don't compare these absolute numbers with numbers you read somewhere else or even that I did about other lenses a few weeks ago because it really can depend from day to day, from morning to afternoon and so on. What's more important I think is the relative difference between these lenses that we see that the 150 to 600 and 300 millimeter f4 perform very similar and very good whereas the 100 to 400 gives uh, less sharp results. However, keep in mind that in many situations in wildlife photography, we can handhold it so long, but often the animal moves a bit faster. So I think especially if you're more beginner photographer, uh, the 100 to 400 will do just fine in like 99% of the situations. In terms of autofocus, I also noticed some differences. The 300 mm f4 was performing clearly the best and the 150 to 600 and 100 to 400 were sometimes a bit more looking for the autofocus and having this a bit pumping behavior. Um, this was not ideal, it was mostly in low light situations, which is again something I think if you're more a beginner photographer, maybe you will not start taking pictures in a rather dark forest. But there I just realized that the 300 millimeter f4, um, maybe because it's a pro lens, is just performing more consistently. Maybe also because it lets in more light with this f4 aperture, which is another thing that is important to consider. If you're shooting more in dark environments, here with the 300 millimeter f4, you just have the lens that lets in most of the light. So which lens would I recommend to you? Um, as you can imagine, it depends a bit what your priorities and needs are. If you're more a beginner photographer or beginner wildlife photographer, you maybe already have your OM-1 camera, maybe a wide angle lens, maybe a macro lens, but you say, now I want to start with bird photography or general wildlife photography. I think I would take the 100 to 400 because it's the lightest of the, of the bunch here, clearly the cheapest, so it's a great starting lens. The image quality is still good, autofocus, I also think you don't, will not have any issues in most of the situations. And another advantage is that you can figure a bit out which is the focal length you like most and with a zoom lens like this you will find uh, which is the focal length you will use most and then later if you plan to upgrade to a more expensive lens you know what to look for. If you are more coming from the like let's say birding scene you just like to watch birds and you want to document and let's say you're artistic um, uh, how should I say I, you're not looking for uh, images with a really smooth background or big bokeh balls um, and also you don't carry the lens for long uh, periods of time. You can maybe use a tripod in many situations. This could be if you're often taking pictures in a nature reserve or you go out with your uh, blind and your tripod in the forest and take pictures there. Then I think the 150 to 600 can be an interesting choice because you get a lot of focal length, good quality, a nicely designed zoom lens. 
Um, however, what I feel, it's a bit heavy. So if you go for a lot of hikes, yeah, it would be too heavy for me. I would not choose this one. My favorite is clearly the 300mm F4. Um, it's one of the Pro series, which I think we notice with some things as the autofocus that I mentioned before. You get from the bunch here the smoothest background if you take take pictures at 300 millimeter. And for me, 300 millimeter is uh, enough in most situations. If it's not, you can still use the 1.4 extender and still get very nice results. It's uh, significantly more compact than the 150 to 600, even though I wish it would be, of course, a bit lighter. I'm, I'm wondering if their materials, well, if it would use the materials of the 150 to 600, if you could actually still lose a bit of weight from this lens. But if I would need it to choose, I would definitely go for the 300 millimeter f4. It was just the lens I had most fun with when shooting out in the field. As I mentioned already above, I linked all of the lenses in the video description. Um, and let me know if you have some experiences with one of or several of the lenses, what your experiences were and what's your favorite lens so far.